Force 13 is about to issue its next batch of forecasts for the Northern Hemisphere and uh, there's quite a lot to uh, tell you about I suppose. Obviously we've seen two, at least two tropical storms in the Atlantic already um, and that was before like the middle to end part of May when we had Bertha making landfall in the Carolinas. Um, so that has obviously painted a different picture as to what we're going to see this year. There's a long way to go. Force 13, um, we are feeling confident now, um, not just in our forecast for the year, but in actually what we're going to uh, achieve in terms of bringing to you the best forecasts that are hopefully available out there. And that's why we'd like to think you keep coming back to us each time. Anyway, I'm waffling far too much. Let me just grab all of my data and tell you what we've got on the way. Now, first of all, um, lots of things to remember. Not all of the predictions are going to be correct. There are going to be some incorrect predictions. There are going to be instances where we might have been right off the mark on one or two things. What I am I don't want to say please to say, but what I can tell you is that back on our April 11th forecast, uh, we forecasted for a significant tropical cyclone impact for the West Bengal or Bangladesh area, and that of course came in the next two months, and that of course came in the form of Ampan. We also forecasted significant chance of typhoon activity in the Philippines, and that has already verified, although needless to say that is quite an easy one considering they do get on average one or two typhoons a year anyway. So let's tell you about what we're expecting beyond today. What you're about to see on the grass here are the numbers, the final totals for this year. So it includes all systems that we've had so far. Another interesting caveat that we've not seen in the previous update from April is that it's also going to include subtropical cyclones as well. So we are about to find out what the numbers are for the Atlantic again in 2020 now that we have more information and we can make a better judgment call on what we're going to expect. So the Atlantic hurricane season we are now looking at from our last forecast of 14 we are now looking at 19 further tropical storms or subtropical cyclones which would bring the total up to 21 for the year 2020 which would include 10 hurricanes, 6 major hurricanes uh, and a big potential for particularly strong storms in the Atlantic, the potential for one or more Category 5s. We'll get on to that a little later. Eastern Pacific, our predictions have gone up modestly 16 tropical storms we're now expecting, 9 hurricanes and 4 major hurricanes in the eastern Pacific. In the western Pacific we've also nudged the numbers up slightly again. We are expecting 29 more storms which would bring the total to 30, 16 more typhoons which would bring the total to 17 and 8 category 3s which after Vong Fong would bring us to nine. We're also expecting the possibility of Category 5s of course in the Western Pacific as well. We're expecting two in the year 2020. All right, so um, as we did last time, over on my board over here, somewhere out there in the world of CGI, we have the upcoming tracks and the key messages for the Atlantic Hurricane season which are the same yet different at the same time. There's uh, a few things that have changed. As we said we're now predicting 21, 10, 6. That's uh, quite a change from what we had in our last update. That's because we've seen massive comparisons with other very active years, um, some of which pop to mind. Not 2005 but we are looking at maybe a season such as 1995 or going way back 1887 also uh, drawing a lot of parallels in the main development region of the Atlantic that's the area between Africa and the Caribbean 
the main Atlantic region. We're looking at uh, 2010 levels of activity there as well. Some of the weak points of the Atlantic this year are looking to be the Gulf Stream, which is interesting. So possibly decreased chances along the US East Coast of anything big. Also, the Northern Gulf looking a little bit, and Western Gulf looking weaker than usual this year. At the moment, that could change. So that is something else to point out. But on the whole, we are looking at the potential and I would say quite a stark possibility of a long tracking, intense Cape Verde type hurricane or multiple that will strike the Caribbean islands, the Lesser Antilles, possibly onto the Greater Antilles and anything that moves through that area could end up going towards the United States, Gulf of Mexico and obviously the country of Mexico. Um, but I just want to add a few things onto that as well. Um, even though we are putting down a 60% chance of major hurricane activity near the Leeward Islands and the Bahamas, um, the Bahamas up again this year, we're also looking at a 70% chance of major hurricane activity at the Greater Antilles. But um, on the Yucatan, along the coast of the US, all the way around from the Gulf to the Northeast, we're looking at an average and I hate to use that word because what does it really mean? Typical chances of hurricane activity, you might get it, you might not. It's the area that we have the least confidence on, unfortunately. And that is happens to be one of the more important places and what with population densities. But what we are looking at is probably a bad year for the Caribbean islands, I'm afraid to say. We're also looking at quite a lot, by the looks of things, of recurving major hurricanes as well. Ones that maybe uh, get close to land, give us a bit of a scare, and then move out to sea. You may be thinking of particular seasons now, recalling from your mind, 2010, 1995, those two really make sense for 2020 so far. Um, and also that the peak month of this season in the Atlantic now is probably going to be August and getting towards late August into the first days of September will probably be the peak and we are a bit concerned about a pronounced October secondary peak as well which would um, mean again the Western Caribbean possibly under the gun I wouldn't say a Wilma but maybe something like a Paloma or some other cyclone like that or indeed an uh, witch on uh, Iris, I'm sorry, Irish, Hurricane, not Irish, Iris, Hurricane Iris in 2001. I swear I haven't been drinking. Um, and that was a storm that made landfall as a category 4, was a category 4, made landfall as a major hurricane on the Yucatan Peninsula. Can't be ruled out. I think we've said enough about the Atlantic before I get in trouble. The Eastern Pacific, uh, there's not a huge amount to say. Um, if we were to say that one of the best analogues was 2013, well, that tells you all you need to know. Although, one of the other best analogues is 1999. Another good analogue, 1978. Um, so, a few seasons we're looking at in the Eastern Pacific. For land, that doesn't mean particularly much, because not that many storms in those years made catastrophic landfalls in, say, Mexico or in Hawaii. So, it's looking optimistic for the Eastern Pacific. We're looking at around, slightly above average, around the average mark for storm numbers. Um, we are confident that there will be at least one long-tracking major hurricane that traverses from the Eastern Pacific through the Central Pacific, maybe even flirting with the Western Pacific. Um, think of storms like Dora, or Hector, or uh, which other ones did we have recently? I'm trying to think on my feet right now, but there have been quite a few that have gone through there. Maybe a John had an extreme case, um, but you get the idea. As for land impacts, the main area of concern is Baja California Sur, um, which looks quite likely at this stage to get a hurricane impact. I think we have it down at 70% or something like that for a hurricane impact, quite high. Um, not so high actually, 40%, but an 80% chance of a tropical storm landfall on that peninsula. The rest of Mexico, average to below average chances of hurricane activity. Doesn't mean you won't get one, but the chances are somewhat low. I would say the biggest risk right now is early season risk near Guatemala, 
uh, and the other Central Caribbean countries of which we're already seeing uh, as this broadcast goes out. So let's take a look at the Western Pacific. Um, there's a lot to talk about I would think in the Western Pacific this year. We've looked at loads of data on this, it's been a real headache actually. Um, what we can say is that the chances seem to be going up for central parts of the Philippines. Uh, I said in the April forecast that uh, the southern part of the Philippines in Mindanao weren't really a concern. We're a little bit worried that that's increasing a little bit now as we get later on into this season. Uh, Luzon is an, still an obvious point for a major typhoon landfall. That can't be ruled out in any way, shape or form. Um, and also southern and uh, central parts of Japan. Uh, pretty confident that there will be at least one typhoon landfall in southern and central Japan and many, many more on the Ryukyu Islands. Um, elsewhere, looking towards China, eastern China is hit and miss. There could be some major typhoons that get dangerously close to eastern China, but it looks like it might just avoid a major typhoon landfall. Can't rule it out. Taiwan looks like it's going to be very much undergone in the northern half, more than half chance of a significant typhoon landfall there. And looking towards the western parts, the South China Sea, um, <coughs> towards Vietnam, generally around average conditions, you've probably seen more tropical storm activity than anything else, and maybe a few weaker typhoons, fingers crossed for not any strong ones. Hong Kong, um, always wary of a typhoon impact, can't rule a category 1 or 2 out there this year either. The Mariana Islands, um, again around average chances of significant typhoon impacts there. I wouldn't be particularly worried, but always wary and uh, wondering, I suppose. But we'll be here on Force 13 with anything that does happen out there at any time and even though we've had such a tumultuous year so far in 2020 our team are more dedicated than ever to bring you even better coverage i hope it's already starting to show and i hope that it will start to show even more when our first tropical weather bulletin starts in what must only be about half an hour's time i'm not clock watching um, but you know it's going to be a very fascinating season ahead everywhere everyone needs to be on their guard everyone